afternoon. And thank you for coming. And so that you know what I'm talking about, I'm going to pass around the two courses that I teach. Um, as, um, as Jenny said, you know, I'm a historian, so it was a bit of a process to get to uh, the trafficking, although um, not really, because uh, as a historian, as a migration, as a historian interested in migration, I was uh, to get into trafficking, it was that much of a uh, sort of bigger change, bigger transformation to me. Uh, but I have had, um, so I came here to Bloomington in 2010 as a visiting scholar, and I was partly work, uh, supposed to do research at the Global Center for Hillary Khan, some of you may know, and to compile a bibliography for trafficking. And also, I was going to teach this course for uh, one semester. And when I finished it, I felt that the students, it was fall 2010, when I, the students kind of were like ready for an action. And I had really nothing to tell them other than read, your, read labels, and that way you're going to be making right decisions about trafficking. And, um, and then what happened was, okay, so I was this sort of um, um, visiting scholar, and then nothing happened <laughs> because I, I decided not to go back to Czech Republic. Didn't have much to go, ba go back to. And so I was sort of searching for opportunities, and opportunities were not really coming my way. And so I finally ended up uh, working and being exploited, um, sexually harassed, um, experienced wage theft in one of the restaurants on Third Street. The restaurant isn't there anymore. Uh, but um, so, and I really couldn't do anything about it because I was so thankful for being able to work in that restaurant, for having some kind of job. And so, but uh, things that in the Department of International Studies, um, at that time it was Dan Knudsen, who is now in geography, decided that he would invite me back because uh, in the fall, when I told it for the first time, the course was full and so nobody was really losing any money because if they offer it again and the course gets filled, um, uh, that'll be fine. So, but I went into this course with the idea, well, we need to do something and so to, um, with the students so that they feel like, you know, dealing with this global phenomenon of human trafficking, that you really need to focus and sort of make it more manageable. And more manageable was this idea that maybe I use more now global problem, local solution. So we should do something locally. And also, you know, trafficking is a really, difficult phenomenon to really uh, handle, to grapple with. And so we're thinking more in trafficking, especially sort of over the years, I think of it as more of an exploitation, an exploitation of vulnerable population. And in a so global, on a global scale, globalization in global north to the population of global south. And things are being only made worse by um, the Global North erecting boundaries and making it impossible for people to come here with the right documents so they come with the wrong documents and they are undocumented. And so my experience in the restaurant um, and uh, something that a person in, uh, I better not tell her, say her name, but um, an organizer, a lawyer in New York City I um, wrote a book called Behind Kitchen Door. Uh, there's a kind of lovely trailer that uh, accompanies the book, and I have to credit again Nicole Showman that was mentioned here once before, that directed me to that film. And by the, by the way, if had I not uh, met um, Nicole Showman, I probably uh, would have gone crazy because she certainly introduced me to the service learning. Do you need ethically?
future. So, um, so I, um, I was once <coughs> invited to uh, talk to a <coughs> human rights commission in Bloomington and um, try to get them interested in partnering up with them and for students in my class to, um, to get their support and get their kind of, uh, okay, uh, <laughs> pick it up later. Uh, because you really need to, uh, many business owners, owners if, they, if students come up to them and say, you know, I'm doing project for class, nobody wants to talk to them. But if you have a member of the Human Rights Commission in Bloomington, it makes it somehow more legitimate and something that maybe business or, uh, owners are more likely to do. And so having partnered with them, and we developed something called lab uh, Fair Labor Initiative. And students, uh, actually it was the student, um, students who came up with the name. And the logo was created by one of the Bloomington um, city artists. And we, uh, what the students did, then they would go uh, to um, restaurants. By now, there are 30 of them. Um, and they would uh, try to uh, certify them, quote unquote, as following Fair Labor Initiative, which is really, they don't do anything extra. Uh, they just follow the Department of Labor uh, rules. And so this is kind of a handout that, uh, that, we, that they put together. And so, um, oops. So we do, we have done this now um, several uh, over. We have done this now, like the first person, first business that was quote unquote certified wa was the Ramsey Box Food and here is the, the two mm -hmm. owners and so we got to go to the city uh, building and um, so write up about it in the Bloom magazine, um, actually in several issues in, in the Bloom magazine. And so I think the city was, or at least some businesses, and the city was kind of excited about it. And um, so it was, I think it was very good for community, but also for the students, because they really were involved. At the end, they got a cake from me because <laughs> they worked so hard. Um, and I don't know. And so and we had a kind of feedback uh, uh, panel session that I think was really good because students related these global problems to the local initiatives and they talked about their experiences and I think it was it kind of trained them to um, get ready for possible failure for the challenges in dealing with an entity in the community but I will say that it was really hard to come up with something that would really work because um, it was kind of a trailblazing eff uh, kind of effort. Um, so uh, there's just one of the members of the initiative. And uh, students were, as I said, were really, I think, excited. And uh, I think the discussion was very interesting. And we invited some just people from, random people from community. Mm -hmm. And so it worked well. Um, and I'll, I'll just talk just uh, briefly about the Oh, what is happening now? Uh, this semester, I was still hoping that we would that we would continue the partnership with the Human Rights Commission, but unfortunately, they decided that they don't do not want to continue. Um, and so, what my students did this semester, um, they kind of went through the back door, as it were, talking to employees and saying, "Well, you know." you know you have this decal on your door, and so I, it's really the employer following fair labor practices. They created a Facebook um, dedicated to it and a Twitter account, and so they were kind of <coughs> checking up because some of them were a little bit skeptical about, well, you know, the, the restaurants have got decal, and so uh, 
is it really, are they really fair to their employees? But I think they sort of learned, but I think this semester, for me, it was a little bit disappointing that we did no longer work with the Human Rights Commission. Um, I will, in conclusion, I will evaluate a little bit teaching these, this course. So this is a course that is a service, that has got service learning project in it. So we read about different aspects of trafficking. Actually, the textbook is on Dubai, and another one was um, uh, on, um, entitled The Global Woman, which is all about mobility of women and the different uh, uh, kind of uh, the different strategies that they do in earning money uh, uh, elsewhere. And uh, but I also teach a course that is uh, with a mi uh, we partner with Middleway House, and it's um, called Sex Work and Domestic Violence at Crossroads, and that is a direct service learning where students spend 20 hours. Uh, I taught that course once so far, and I will teach it again in the spring. And again, there was a student that received one of the uh, service learning awards because she was really fantastic so and I, I often hear from students who uh, left the university so I get a feedback you know this was so important I'm going definitely going to work in um, uh, something to do with human rights or for an NGO and this was kind of really uh, um, that course was really important I will definitely have to agree with you saying how difficult it is to construct the syllabus for these courses because how you integrate and uh, service learning projects how you you know it I'm, I'm sort of I always want to make sure that the courses are meaningful that they have something to say to the problems of the world and of the community uh, but they require a lot of patience on the part of students and a lot of creativity. And I have to be frank, peop uh, students nowadays, at least half of, that's been my experience, like to be guided by their hands and they really don't want to use the, that freedom that I give them. And so I will say that any kind of innovation in this respect and I will I, I might sound a little bit bitter now but any kind of innovations in the um, teaching way and especially if you're an adjunct uh, it's very very tricky because um, the, the students that really need to have rubrics and they need to have the sort of just rubrics for everything uh, tend to be lost and but they uh, but they oftentimes don't take the initiative to say, look, I'm lost, you know, explain that to me. And so of course then it appears on the um, student evaluations. And if you have a chair that is not understanding, that is, that is not supportive of this, um, so then you are basically facing a catastrophe. And so th I actually as it is, as I'm speaking, I am struggling uh, to, keep this course going and because it may not be uh, I may not be able to teach it um, and which I, I think it, it's a shame because you know especially with the with the refugee situation we talk about here about trafficking and it's this is only in our faces but there are so many aspects of exploitation whether it's uh, you know Thai um, Thai fishermen hiring Filipinos and then exploiting them, take their passports away. So, so anyway, so it, it really is a global issue. It's a local issue as well as the students are able to understand now. But um, I'm glad I, I uh, tackled it, but um, maybe not always, maybe successfully in um, uh, maybe in, e even in the eyes of, mm, I'm not sure about the department, but uh, I don't think there is still a great enough in understanding and support for service learning courses. Uh, I d there's probably one person who teaches service learning course in the Department of International Studies and um, 
it would be nice to have somebody else to kind of exchange ideas and uh, approaches so that it really works because you know, if you do an authentic assignment, if you work with people, it just is not, you really, these are human beings that you do not know what to anticipate at the, anticipate at the end, and things may not, not work. So, um, uh, I'll be happy to answer any questions. I think I prepared much more to say, but I am well over the time limit. And I, maybe the last thing I will show you so that you see that there is a little bit of, um, uh, digital things because I don't think that I've shown much of digital of anything but um, one of the things that we did bef I did before with the students was partnering up with the global gift store and I always laugh and say at least you know that was a very good for you to be involved in that because you got to go past Kilroy's and <laughs> had to go all the way to the square and I don't think I have the right codec to play this movie, I'm sorry. Okay, so that was just the digital stories that students did um, to look at the items being sold in global gift store and then tracing where, they, where the goods came from. And some of them were made women who may have been trafficked for sex. Uh, so they followed basically they created a story and I think the one that I wanted to show you was about chocolate and the child exploitation that goes on in producing chocolate that's not fair trade. Thank you.